Hellenistic philosophy. Perry defines Hellenism simply as Greek civilization. More specifically, the underlying feature of Hellenism was a certain universalism, which involved a shift in focus from the city to the oikumene, that is, the inhabited world. In this universalism, Hellenism fostered a synthesis or blending of Greek culture with various national and local cultures, resulting in a universalization of the Greek language and thought. Philosophy reflected this shift in emphasis from the city to the world. Perry writes, philosophers came to regard the civilized world as one city, the city of humanity. That is page 103. Four different schools of thought, each in its own way, rep represented this new perspective. Epicureanism, Stoicism, Skepticism, and Cynicism. First, we consider Epicureanism. It derives its name from Epicurus, a philosopher of the late 4th, early 3rd century BC. Epicurus established his own school known as the Garden. His school was unusual for its day in that he admitted not only free men, but slaves and women. Metaphysically, Epicurus believed the universe to be infinite and eternal. And while this eternal physical universe obviously undergoes change, it is not subject to any kind of power or influence external to itself. Therefore, God or the gods are not essential to understanding reality. In fact, Epicurus considered the pantheon of gods to be purely mythological without any basis in reality. Wisdom comes not from knowing the gods, but from understanding the structure and operations of the universe. Epicurus taught that pleasure was the essence of the happy life, but this did not necessarily mean yielding wholly to sensual delights. For, ex for instance, excessive eating would be rejected by the Epicureans because it actually leads to discomfort and ill health, which are sources of unhappiness. In fact, Epicurus urged what we would call the virtue of temperance, that is, the moderation of the enjoyment of created goods. This would yield the greatest amount of lasting pleasure. Now we come to Stoicism. The philosophy of Stoicism derives its name from the Greek word stoa, meaning porch or colonnade. For this was where Zeno, the earliest proponent of Stoicism, taught his students. Metaphysically, Stoicism posits the oneness of the universe, consisting of four elements, air, water, earth, and fire. Fire is the most fundamental of these elements and is the basis of all reality. This primal fire is identified with God and is the source of all that exists by way of emanation. The entire cosmos moves in a foreordained manner from various states of material existence toward final reabsorption into the primal fire. Given that the ineluctable goal of all the cosmos is reabsorption into the primal fire, how ought one to live? Well, according to the Stoics, one achieves happiness through a life of virtue, wherein one resigns oneself to one's ultimate fate. Since this ultimate fate is just that, an ultimate unavoidable fate, one deals with the blessings and misfortunes of life through apatheia, that is, indifference. All that matters is living a life of virtue and integrity while one moves towards reabsorption into the primal fire. Now we come to skepticism. This comes from the Greek word skeptomai, meaning to examine. And skepticism is a much looser philosophy than Epicureanism or Stoicism. Pyro of Elis was one of the originators of this tendency of thought. Pyro left us no writing, so his doctrine comes to us from his followers. But according to some accounts, he came into contact with Indian philosophers after India was conquered by Alexander the Great, and this may have influenced his thought. Pyronianism, that is a school of skepticism, maintains that all observable phenomena are essentially unstable and unfixed in their nature. Therefore, one must refrain from making any definitive judgments about reality. 
All truth claims are subjective perceptional observations. They do not correspond to the truth of the matter. By refraining from any truth judgment, say the skeptics, one achieves ataraxia, that is, freedom from psychological distress. And this is the skeptical understanding of happiness. We finally come to cynicism. Like skepticism, cynicism is a rather loose school of thought with different variations of emphasis. The originator of this school is generally believed to be Diogenes of Sinope. The word cynic actually derives from the Greek word kunikoi, which is derivative of the word kuon, meaning dog. Appropriately, in the picture, the statue on the right shows Diogenes standing next to a dog. The cynics had no shared systematic body of doctrine. They represented more of, life, of a lifestyle, of one of rejection of society's conventions. They advocated a life according to nature as opposed to civilized life, and shunned material possessions while at the same time giving themselves to sensual license in public, including open sexual activity. They believed themselves to be proclaimers of morality, of morality to the common people, as opposed to the elitist tendencies of the other schools of thought. <clears throat> 